This video is to be used for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace individual research or licensed investment advice. Unique experiences and past performance does not guarantee future results. Trading stocks, options, and spot currencies involves substantial risk and there's always the potential for loss. Your trading results may vary. No representations are being made that any software or training will guarantee profits or not result in losses from trading. This is the Premier Trade Market Wrap. This is the Market Wrap on a Monday. I'm Jack Lott here on the James Dix Financial Network. Fed Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke and the Board of Fed Governors sound as if they prefer to just say no to an interest rate cut this week. But the financial markets may not let them do that. Policymakers from Bernanke on down have avoided signaling that they want to reduce benchmark lending rates at their October 30th through 31st meeting, ever since lowering them by a larger than anticipated half percentage point back in September. The decision from the Fed is scheduled to be announced 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday afternoon. Oil prices rose above $93 a barrel to a new trading high in Asia after Mexico's state oil company said it was suspending about a fifth of its oil production due to a storm. Light sweet crude for December delivery rose as much as $1.34 to $93.20 a barrel, a new intraday record in early afternoon Asian electronic trading on the New York Mercantile Exchange. It later did slip back to $92.82 a barrel. General Motors said it will set up a $250 million alternative fuel research center in Shanghai amid efforts by global automakers to produce commercially viable alternatives to gasoline engines. Global automakers are stepping up research into fuel cells, biofuels, diesel, as well as other power sources. Stan O'Neill, Merrill Lynch Company's beleaguered chief executive, has decided to leave that firm and is negotiating the terms of his departure, reportedly. The Merrill Board is expected to conduct a board-based search both internally and externally for O'Neill's replacement. In Forex news today, the dollar slipped lower against the euro, reaching a record low. Then it continued its slide in morning European trading as markets look for signals from the Fed about a likely rate cut this week. The European currency has been climbing steadily against the dollar all year long, soaring to new highs almost weekly since August on the back of market fears over the U.S. economy's health because of the subprime credit crisis and increasingly disappointing economic reports. But the euro's increase, which uh, makes goods from the U.S. much cheaper to buy and shopping for U.S.-bound tourists ideal, it can hurt exports from countries that use the euro, particularly Germany and France. Earlier this month, a survey looking at German investor confidence showed strong concern about exports. The strength of the euro risks making European exports less competitive. In Asia, the Hong Kong dollar hit the upper end of its trading ban for the first time, prompting the Hong Kong Monetary Authority to refute speculation that it would abandon its peg against the U.S. dollar. The U.S. currency dropped to its weakest level in 33 years versus the Canadian dollar and a 23-year low against Australia's dollar. Yields on two-year treasuries are now at the lowest among the bonds of the group of seven nations, excluding Japan, after traders raised bets that the Fed will reduce rates again this week. The yen weakened against all but one of the 16 most traded currencies as gains in stocks spurred so-called carry trades. Well, scheduled economic reports uh, tomorrow include the retail chain index, consumer confidence for October, and tomorrow morning that FOMC meeting begins. In earnings news today, Verizon, the nation's second largest telecommunications company, reported third quarter earnings fell by a third from a year ago due to tax charges. Verizon earned a dollar, uh, excuse me, $1.27 billion. That's 44 cents a share in the latest period. Humana said its third quarter profit nearly doubled from a year ago as income from its government segment surged, aided by a one-time gain and improvements in its commercial business. Net income grew to $302.4 million, or $1.78 a share. Analysts had only expected $1.49. Office Depot said it's delaying its third quarter earnings results due to an independent review of vendor program funds by its audit committee. The review preliminary, uh, primarily rather, relates to the timing of the recognition of certain funds. The company was scheduled to release its third quarter results on Tuesday. A new date has not yet been released. As a result, Office Depot shares lost more than 10 percent on that announcement. Scheduled earnings reports coming out on Tuesday, Procter & Gamble, Colgate Palmolive, DreamWorks Animation, Airtran Holdings, Fresh Del Monte, Chipotle Mexican Grill, MGM Mirage, Avon, Martin Marietta, Goodyear Tire and Rubber, Liz Claiborne, and Sirius Satellite Radio 
among some of the marquee names on Tuesday. Some of the stocks in the news, Alton U.S. Energy, a Dallas refiner and retailer of petroleum products, estimating third quarter earnings at 23 to 29 cents a share. Brookfield Homes reporting a third quarter profit of $1.6 million or six cents a share. That is down from $27.6 million or $1.03 a share in last year's period. And Coca-Cola Bottling reporting third quarter profit of $5.3 million or 58 cents a share. That's up from $4.9 million. And that's the market wrap. I'm Jack Lott. This is the James Dix Financial Network.